And just like that, another anime of Summer of Anime 2016 has come to a close. Tales of Zestiria, the X, has finally ended. Now, as always, I want to let you know that even though Tales of Zestiria, you know, this part has ended, there is going to be another part of Tales of Zestiria, the X, that will come out later on down the road, because this is just half of it, and it was announced to have another half at a later date. And usually when it comes to Studio Affotable, they love to, you know, kind of split the seasons in half, like what they did with Fate Zero, what they did with Fate Stay Night. That's kind of what they're doing right now with this series. So this isn't, even though this is like the finale for now, this isn't the finale finale of this this anime series in general, there is more to it. So I am looking forward to when it finally returns. But getting off of that, let's talk about the episode in general, this final episode so far of the first half of the series. So this final episode showcases the final villain, the Lord of Calamity himself. And my overall impressions of the Lord of Calamity, I personally am a big fan of the design. I like the design. It's kind of simplistic to a final boss and lord or whatever, but I do like his design overall, especially if I was to see him like in the game, if I was to actually play the game. He looks like a badass boss. I love his voice actor, big fan of the voice actor, and I mean, I like the reasoning of why he left the characters to survive. Because when it comes to games and stuff, usually the villains tend to leave the, you know, the main cast of characters alive for no fucking reason at all, and you're like, this is bullshit. I mean, usually the main character, there's no way he could fight the main villain. Why would the main villain just leave him to, to stay alive when he could just finish it there and he would have no problems in the future. I mean, it's kind of pointless and it's kind of stupid. I mean, you're just allowing the hero to build up, get stronger before he can defeat you. And in this episode, there's actually a lot of clarification to why the Lord of Calamity decided to leave Sorde alive, which I appreciate that fact of the writing. One of the big things was that the reason why he was going to leave Sorde alive and everybody else alive and allow him to eventually come and face him was because... He wants more despair. He wants to despair. Everybody to feel despair when the shepherd that has everybody behind him, everybody backing him, everybody thinking he's the main hero that'll save the world from all this calamity, the, you know, the lord of calamity. He wants everybody to feel like, you know, the shepherd is their hero. And when finally he faces the lord of calamity, the lord of calamity wants to put him down and kill him for everybody to fear and have the ultimate despair. And then he wins and he has more power, inexhaustible fuel. So I understand the point of view of why the Lord of Calamity decided to keep Saray alive. It makes a hell of a lot more sense than other series when it comes to this because, I mean, usually the villain just walks off, leaves the main character alive for no fucking reason. So I'm just, I very, I'm very happy with this episode to at the very least clarify why the villain was able to leave and leave Saray like that because he wanted everybody to feel despair when he finally killed him. So getting off of that fact, besides my overall impressions of the villain being rather Good. I think the overall plot of this episode was pretty nice, the way it settled for this first half. I mean, you have it to where the main war, the fight was going on that Saray set out to, you know, kind of stop with Alicia. It got stopped in this episode. The commanders stopped. They stopped trying to fight each other. And overall, everything was kind of saved at the end of the day. But every character, certain amount of characters are going their own separate paths. Like, for instance, Alicia's going back to her main hometown, Lady Lake. And when you have it to where Saray, he's going off his own adventure to the country that was currently fighting with our main country that we were in throughout majority of the first half of Tales of Zestiria. So, I mean, the characters are splitting up, and judging by the interaction at the end of this episode, Alicia might be thrown to the side for a good long while, probably until the end of the next part of Tales, which kind of makes me sad because he, she's such a good character, and, I mean, after the latest episodes and all that, I've gotten to see her character development, how she's been characterized and all that. I've loved, you know, her character, and to see how she's probably going to be pushed to the side for a while because, you know, the next part most likely is going to focus on Saray's event into the other country, and Alicia's not gonna have the big focus. It makes me sad, but I guess, you know, to continue the plot, they have to go on adventures, go to different countries and parts of the world, but I just feel like it's kind of sad to know she probably won't be a big focus in the next half of Tales of Zestidia. So, next thing to talk about, let's talk about the spirit that saved Alicia. So, there was this greenish you know, spirit that popped up at the end of last week's episode. We didn't really get to see him much, but we knew he was there. But at this time, though, there's not a whole lot of information known about this spirit. I mean, we know his design and stuff, but we don't know much about his overall personality. I'm gonna assume he is the one that healed Alicia when Saray got there and all that. So, I mean, we know he's probably a good guy, but we don't know much about him at this time. So most likely, you know, the next half of Tales, when it finally does come out in anime form, we'll get to see more about his personality. So yeah, my overall thoughts of the first half of Tales of Zestiria of the X, 
it was it was a good series. I mean, it wasn't the best thing I've ever seen from this year or in anime in general, but I mean, it wasn't bad. It definitely was not bad. I think one of the weakest things about the series, though, would definitely be the fighting. Now, as I've already stated already while doing reviews for the series, I'm not a person that always needs action to be happy, but when it comes to Tales of Zestudia, since it is based on a game that does have a lot of combat and action and stuff, I felt like the action really carried not much weight at all in the series. I felt like the action, you know, was too quick Quick. It wasn't something that was very awe-inspiring, like, holy crap, this is amazing. I mean, even though the animation looks good in the series, I just felt like the, you know, the action scenes, they were handled too quickly, and it felt like there wasn't a lot of emphasis or tension in a lot of the fights. The only times I felt really tension in some of the fights, so when Saray was having to purify certain Hellions, and then that's when I felt it. But when it came to the overall fights and the execution of it, I wasn't the biggest fan of the said fights of the series. But besides that, though, Tales of Zestudia was a solid series. I did enjoy my ride with it, and it's definitely something that got me interested in wanting to play the game and also playing the other Tales game that was uh, came out very recently, so I mean, it, it did its job fine. I, if it was meant to be an advertisement, if it was meant to kind of get me into starting the games, it definitely did its job because I do want to actually pick it up and try to play it because I do enjoy the characters, I do enjoy the world so far, what we've seen of it, and I just can't wait for the second part of the anime to finally come out. So that's about it. See you all next time when, you know, the second half of Tales comes out. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.